Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy A Abraham on Tour 20 and I'm bringing you guys week two of the weekly transactions. And we have a lot more transactions than we did last week. So I'm gonna go a little bit faster through each trade, but just note that the trades, I'm still gonna go in depth with them, just not as in depth because otherwise this would be about a 40 minute video. And I hope you guys enjoy it. And without further ado, let's get right into the trades. Now, we only have one trade for this week actually. And that is coming with top a coach of the Pittsburgh Piratatas, and he's trading with Crimson, coach of the Detroit Steel Wings, and they're trading Slow King for Slow Bro. Now, Tup had approached Crimson about this trade, and he started trying to get down in the DMs and seeing if Crimson would go with this. And Tup mentions that he needed Slow King because it was a much better special defensive mod, and it pairs so much better with Tangrowth and the rest of his team in general, which is huge for Tup, obviously, because relying on Tangrowth and Slow Bro for special defensive walls isn't really gonna do you too well because neither of them even hit the 100 mark so you'd be slapping assault vests for days he says this also helps him for future free agents that he's hoping to make so he feels like that this will definitely benefit him in general for his upcoming matches and his season in general he also mentions that he's a lars fanboy and wanted to steal the season 5 generator core that lars had so lars if you're watching this make sure that tup doesn't beat you in the sense of stealing your generator core from you and Top, if you're watching this, uh, knock him dead and maybe make this your regenerator core for season eight of the GBA. Now, next up here, we have Crimson's side of the trade, and Crimson felt like this paired better with his special defensive mons, such as Sylveon and Tenacruel, who I will get into in a bit. But he feels like Slowbro also gives him more of a physically defensive mon while still giving him Slow King's roles. So he has all the coverage that Slow King would have had, still has the recovery and the status. So it's pretty much the same Mon, just better suited for Crimson's team, which I think definitely ends up benefiting them both insanely throughout the rest of the season. I uh, can't wait to see how it actually does for them. Next up, speaking of Crimson, we have his free agent picks. He has two this week. One is he's dropping Skuntank for Tenacruel, and the other one he's dropping Oricorio for Dustinolar. Now, we're going to start with Skuntank for Tenacruel. Tenacruel gives him the hazard removal in rapid spin this time, so it's not defog. Which is pretty big because even though he's blocked by ghost types with rapid spin i personally feel like it's better because you can actually set up hazards which is another thing that tenacruel gives him it gives him a toxic spikes user which he didn't have before and still is able to actually come in and absorb toxic spikes of its opponents so skuntank was able to absorb the toxic spikes but it could never set them up so shout outs to crimson for picking that up it also gives him plenty of support options with things like haze and rapid spin and knock off and still being able to be offensive and defensive which there aren't too many water types that can do both while still being good in the format so crimson picked up a very good one still is a fairy killer which is something that obviously crimson can very much benefit from because anyone can really benefit from a fairy killer um in the other trade oricorio for dusk noir because let's face it oricorio wasn't doing anything the analyst that predicted that oricorio would reverse sweep the season um you're already out because oricorio has been dropped and Dusk Noir, though, actually gives him an 11th member. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Oricorio might have done stuff, but Dusk Noir gives him a much better physically offensive mon, whereas Oricorio obviously wasn't physically offensive to begin with. But it gives him a much better physically offensive mon than Skuntank was. And he mentions that he mostly picked this up because it gives him the roles that he had with Skuntank that Tenor Rule couldn't otherwise fulfill, being Pursuit Trapper and physically offensive. Um, Dustin Or also gives him priority and a bulky ghost type. Priority in things like Shadow Sneak and obviously a bulky ghost type, which can be a nice spin blocker for Crimson. It gives him will o -Wisp support, which is huge because with things like Sylveon on this team and Tenacruel that would normally be specially defensive, not always, but normally, it gives him ways to actually take physical hits with both of them, which is pretty nice. It has much better coverage than Skuntank, being things like the Elemental Punches, Shadow Sneak, and it also gives him utility options. So, Crimson, I really like your trades. Next up, though, we got George, coach of the San Francisco Arcaniners. And he has one trade this week, being X Plowed for Miss Magius. Now, at first, I didn't really get this because I am a huge X Plowed fan. I love using it in the format, especially offensive normal types. I don't think there's a single one I dislike in the format, to be honest, out of the ones that are actually used. So, shout outs to George for actually drafting it in the first place. But,. I feel like once once I realized his reasonings behind it, it makes a lot more sense to me why he did it. 
because Miss Magnus gives him a Mon that's above base 105 speed, which is something that's really good for George's team. He doesn't have a lot of Mons that really reach 100 base speed, but Miss Magnus gives him a user that's 105. It's a nice spin blocker. He put also a fighting immunity when he told me this, but it's the same thing whether you call it a fighting immunity or a spin blocker, it's still a ghost type. It takes pressure off a of Mew for a setup sweeper, or especially offensive Mon in general, because it has options like Nasty Plot and Calm Mind, so this makes Mew actually more viable physically offensive on this team, which is something that can definitely help him in future weeks. And one more thing to mention is he said that he didn't really feel like x would be doing anything that another Mon on this team couldn't do in his upcoming matches, so I feel like that was something really good to point out. Uh, and I'm really glad that George really thought about that when he was going for this trade. And I think that that was really what kind of nailed it for me, thinking, you know, this trade is actually a pretty good trade for George. Because I didn't really look at it at first, but once he pointed it out to me, I started to notice that. And it seemed like it was a really good idea. So, shout out to George for doing that. I think it was a phenomenal trade. Uh, and I hope that you use it well in your future weeks, George. I'm really rooting for you. Next up though, a trade that's a little bit more questionable, but I definitely still get the reasons behind it at least. We have Dan, coach of the St. Louis Rampardos, and he's dropping for Alligator for Golisopod. Now, the only thing that really, really irks me about this trade is Dan has like nine physical attackers on his team. Eight or nine, give or take. Because let's face it, Victini is going to be physical more than, more than often, at least because of V-Create. So it might be mixed still, but most people run Victini physical, so... He still has 8 mons though that are dedicated physically offensive, or that just are not specially offensive in general. And his special offensive is limited to Electros, Victini, and Clefable. So this doesn't really help in the specially offensive department, but what it does help him with is gives him a Mammoth Swine Switch in, because he does have to play it twice, so I feel like that already is a huge selling point for me. Uh, as a, there was only one thing I didn't like about this trade. Everything else I really did like, like for example, it gives him a spikes user and still keeps priority Aqua Jet and being stabbed as well. So I feel like in that department, it's really nice. I just don't like that he picked up another physical Mon. I was really hoping he'd get a special attacker. Um, he does note though that this isn't the best free agent in the world that he probably could have made, but he feels like it's definitely something that he needed to make right now. So I can completely get behind that. It is a bug type after all, and Dan is a bug catcher, so... Who knows what he's going to do with it. He'll probably make it work in some way, shape, or form. And finally, though, the final coach making transactions this week. We have Steve, who has two transactions. He is dropping Kafagragus and Quagsire for Licky Licky and Hariyama. Now, the reason he picked up Licky Licky, right off the bat, I just want to make this very clear for all you people that are going to rip on Steve for Licky Licky. He doesn't want Chansey, and he knows it's still available. Chansey's just set up fodder, and it's locked into using an Eviolite. So already, when Steve pointed that out, I was like, you know, this is already really good. I'm glad that he realized this, that Chansey was still available. Um, but there's a couple of things that even I didn't even really realize until he brought it up. Licky Licky gives him weather control, and playing MV twice, this is going to be huge, because weather control with, with Cloud9 is going to be nice against the rain, which MV could otherwise bring and just kind of sweep him with, to be honest. Uh, it gives him Dragon Tail, so it's a way to clear stats, whereas otherwise Cafagrius had Haze. So this still at least gives him a way to phase stat boost away in that department with Licky Licky. And Licky Licky can still take hits for days. It's got a great HP stat. It's also got a ghost immunity. While dropping, Cafagrius gets rid of one of his dark weaknesses and one of his ghost weaknesses. This is very big for Steve's team because everyone rips on him for his ghost and dark weakness. Another thing is that the fighting weakness, which is Licky Licky's only weakness, can still be handled very, very well by Mimikyu and Cresselia. So I feel like this is a very good trade. Also gives him very good offensive coverage with Licky Licky with things like Ice Punch and Earthquake and also Stab Return, obviously. And it gives him a Heal Bell user too, which I'm not sure if, some, if Steve realized this, but it gives him a Heal Bell user, which is very nice on Steve's team as it helps with things like Cress, who now don't need to worry about things like Toxic getting put on it. And also Cress can actually run other moves on its set. So shout out to Steve for this trade. And another trade that I really like from Steve is he dropped Quagsire for Hariyama. Now this gives him a Fake Out user and a Bullet Punch user. Uh, he only mentioned Bullet Punch, but I still want to point out Steve that Fake Out is phenomenal, especially with your team. Helps break Sashes, which otherwise could maybe stop things like Mudsdale, who don't have the best special defense stat, but it's still not a bad special defense stat by any means. And it also helps with the rest of your team, especially Kartana, because Kartana is going to get knocked out if it has to worry about a special attacker that lives on a sash. 
So Fake Out is great. It also gives him Bullet Punch, so priority. It's great for revenge killing. It's of an effective Dark Resist that's bulky and can still actually take out Dark types. So again, it's another way to clear that Dark Weakness that everyone seems to have in Steve for. Uh, which he seems to be at least doing okay against. And it also gives him Thick Fat, which is very nice for bulky Mons. It's very nice on his team in general. So, you know, I really like the Hariyama pickup. I've used Hariyama recently, and I personally really like using it. I feel like it's a great fighting type in League. It's something that's very underrated, but I think it works really well in CU's team. And that is going to be it for the free agents and transactions this week. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a like down below. Comment, tell me what you think of the transactions. Who is your favorite one this week? And maybe comment some that you hope that the coaches will make in future weeks. Because I'd love to see what you guys are thinking. Because obviously, I can't think of every single trade and transaction. I'm only one guy. And I still have a life, you know. But that's it for me. I'm going to be signing out. Peace out, all you GBA fans.